Hello everyone, welcome to Monty Excel, Excel in Life. Wherever you are in this world, we all speak one language that is Microsoft Excel. Let's see using Microsoft Power Query how to create a pivot table from multiple sheets seamlessly. Are you tired of manually combining data from various sheets to create a pivot table? Well, no more. In this video, we will dive into the power of Microsoft Power Query, a fantastic tool that will change the way you work with your data. Power Query allows you to effortlessly connect, transform, and combine data from multiple sheets, making your data analysis process faster and more efficient. No more copying and pasting or dealing with the complex formulas. Power Query does the heavy lifting for you. Whether you are a seasoned data analyst or just starting your journey, this video is for you. We will walk you through step-by-step -step process from connecting to multiple sheets, transforming data, and finally, creating a dynamic pivot table that updates automatically as your data changes. Get ready to unlock the true potential of your data and take your Excel skills to the next level with Microsoft Power Query. Hit that subscribe button and like this video if you are excited to learn how to master Power Query for pivot tables. Don't forget to leave your questions and comments in the section below. Let's dive in and level up your data analysis game together. So without further delay, Stop. let's get started. All right, we can see two tables here. One is the transaction table one, transaction table two. In real time scenario, we must be having a multiple sheet here. For the example, we have taken two. Uh, as for the first table is concerned, we can see our transaction number as a first column and date as a second column, department, quantity, and sales amount. And if you take a look, closer look, the date is showing in the first column, whereas in the first table, the date is showing in the B column. In the same way, the transaction number is in the B column and transaction number is in the A column. So what I mean to say is the columns are not really constant here. It is keep changing as this data is being extracted from system. So whatever the reason might be. So what we're going to do here is now we want to combine this data. So how in real time scenario manually, if you are trying to do, you'll copy this date column and go to the first table and find where is the date column and try to paste under this date. But let's not do this anymore because we want our Microsoft Power Query to identify smartly the column names and automatically club these two data sets into one and try helping us in creating a pivot table. So to do that, what we need to do is first, let's try to convert this into a table format. As you know, to use, uh, we need to use a shortcut key, control T in order to create a table. So I'm just saying, see, my table has a headers here, said, okay, my table is created. So let me go for table design and change the table name to trans one, anything. Now the table name is also given. Now going to the second table, trying to make it as a table format and as well as go to the table design and let's say trans two, this is only a Identification, why? Because we may have in real time many tables. So in order to differentiate, it's always better to give a proper table names here. So the business case or the problem statement is quite clear here. The columns are not same. Uh, it is interchange, A is in the B column, B is in the C column, but still we want to club. As you can see, there are almost 30 rows in the first table. In this transaction two table, there are some 200 odd rows. So the number is not constant here. The data is keep growing, but we don't want to keep an eye how much data is growing, whether my <clears throat> pivot table is rightly linked or not. Right, so what we need to do is, as I said, like we are going to use a power query in order to do this. I'll go to the data. Here where we can see get and transform data here. All right, so we can get data from an Excel workbook or CSV or XML, JSON, is a lot of features what we have, but currently the data is residing within the Excel file itself, right? So we have these multiple sheets within the workbook itself. Had it been, if it is a different file, I would have went for the data and get data from file, from Excel workbook or from the folder. What does it mean the folder? Like you have multiple files which you want to Consult it. Now, I'm not going to use any of the option here because the data is sitting in my 
right Excel here. So what I do is I'll go to data again. I'll select this option, what you can see from table or range. So already you know that is we have created a, we also mentioned a name for this table that is a trans one. Just I'll quickly click on this. Once you click, it will take you another internal window called Microsoft Power Query. So once you go to this query, we can see Now you can see it is showing up that data, what it is collected from the first table. That is trans one, it's already showing up. Trans one as the name of the table. And here it is showing the source. Source is nothing but showing where exactly it got this data. That is excel.currentworkbook. And the name of the table is trans one. All right, so I've done the, my first job. Now what I'll do is I'll simply close and load two. There are two options here. We can just say close and load. Never try to use close and load at this moment because if you click close and load, it will try to create a separate sheet and it will put the same data again into the Excel sheet. So let's say close and load two. So here we have a different options available. That is either you want to create a table. No, because we already have a table here. Do you want to create a pivot table report? All right. Do you want to create a pivot chart here? or you want to just create a connection. At this moment, I want to create a connection because I also need to work on the second table. So let's say, okay, instantly you'd see at the right side that the connection is trying to be established now, right? Now, let me do the same exercise for the transaction table two. For that, I'll go to the data. I'll go to the from table or range, same option again. Now it is taking me to the window where I can see my table name as trans two and trans2 here, and this is my entire data set. Now, again, I'll close and not close and load, but rather close and load2. Once you say load2, it will again ask you the same options, whether you want to create a report or whether you want to create a chart or you want to just create a connection. At this moment, I want to create a connection. Just say, okay. So why I created only a connection? Because if you say table, it will create another sheet and start loading the same data into your Excel file, which I don't want. Now, I have the two tables, which are going to be a very dynamic and created two queries. Now, what next? I want to club them both, right? Because the data is keep growing, I cannot do it manually. Now, once you create a relationship between this, or you append both, so this process is going to be forever. That means it's a one-time access what I'm doing. Next time when the data is growing, automatically everything updates. So let's try to click on any of the table here because I want to edit it. Once you go to the window where you can see table one and table two here, right? Now try to check transaction number is showing in the A column. In the transaction two, it is showing the data. Now, how this data is going to be clubbed? Do I need to do any kind of exercise or do I need to write any fo form, uh, formulas I need to write or do I need to write any code? Nothing, we doesn't require to do anything. Your Power Query is much powerful and at the same time, it's very smart enough to identify the column numbers automatically. So let's do that. Now, what I'll do is there is an option in the Home button that is you want to merge. No, I don't want to merge here. I want to append rather. There are two options I get it. Whether you want to append as a query, both tables, or you want to append a query as a new. Let's try to see new at this moment. Once you click on the new, there is an, uh, a dialog box appears on the screen where it will ask you, do you have two tables only or three or more tables? So when you click on three or more tables, we have an option of selecting a multiple tables which you extracted from your Excel workbook. So I don't have multiple sheets here. I'll just click on two tables. That is two tables option. The first table is already identified and my second table is trans2. So the basic advantage of giving the names, now you can see because I'm able, able to easily identify, differentiate which table is talking about what information. So that is a trans1 and trans2. Once I say, okay, you'll see there is a one more uh, query is created here. You can see append one, which I want to rename. Let's say uh, consolidation. All right, once I say consolidation, my table is ready. Now my question is uh, trans one, trans two, they are not talking to each other because the columns are not similar, not in the right position. But is this append done correctly? Let's try to check. Transaction number is in transaction, date is in the date, department is department, everything is in the right direction clubbing, okay? So what we need to do is now say, close and not load two, rather say close and load two. 
Once you say close and load to, again, the same option appears here. Do you want to create a table? No, I don't want to create a table because I already have the two tables in my Excel workbook. I don't want to create another table of consolidation. No, let's create a pivot table report here. Of course, you can also go for a pivot chart if you have the right visualization in your mind, what chart I require for this statement. So what I'll do is at this moment, I want to create a pivot table. So simply say, okay, it is going to create a brand new sheet for you. And it is asking you what are the columns you want to include? Of course, it's a, a I want to use a department in the rows column. Maybe I want to use the sales amount in the values. That's it. Your pivot table is ready now and it is much dynamic. Of course, we can do the cosmetic changes. You want to change in it. You want to change it in a different format. You can do that by going to the design, by changing it to a different style altogether. If you want to do any kind of stuff here. All right. My table format is also changed. Now, what I'll do is in order to test whether it's really working. I mean, tomorrow, if any data has been added, is it really going to show up? Let's try to see. Let us pick up any of the uh, department here. Sports and goods is there. And in the consolidation, I can see sports and goods. Combining these two tables, that is the trans one and trans two, the total amount shows here. That is one, two, four, one, six. So let's try to add one row here. Quickly, I'll go to the bottom. I'll close this window for time being. And uh, let's add one more row here. Now, being it's a table, what happens is everything automatically updates. So sports and days, I will change to some big number. Let's see if it is really updated. I'll go to the consolidation. I'll just quickly refresh. And you can see the amount is changed now for the sports and goods. So this is the complete process, how you can just create a beautiful pivot report, which you can use for the data analysis, or you can create a dashboard for your use. So from the two tables I have created, now you know how to create a pivot table from not just two tables, from multiple sheets. That too, it's going to be a dynamic in the bit. If you find this video informative, then click on like button and make sure to subscribe to Monty Excel. The best is yet to come. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.